Hello, I'm Terry Kolath, and I manage the Academy of Lifelong Learning here at Shell Point. And it's my privilege today to introduce you to Bonnie Palmquist of Coquina. You may already know her, but today you're going to know her in terms of a class she's giving for us this summer. Thanks for joining me, Bonnie. Thank you. I uh, was so impressed when you sent me this DVD to look at. It was, it was mind-boggling, really. And um, I'm kind of curious, how did you come upon such a treasure that you can share with all of us? Well, it starts with a friendship. Mm -hmm. I am friends with the woman who wrote the biography of Lilius Trotter. Mm -hmm. And we've been friends since high school, so maybe 30 years ago. It's an interesting story, but she discovered Lilius. Mm -hmm. Lilius had been lost, so to speak, for about almost a hundred years. And she discovered Lilius, became fascinated with her life as an artist, as a protege of John Ruskin, and as a very adventurous Victorian woman, mm -hmm. as well as a deep spiritual thinker. So my friend Miriam began to look into her life, began to do research, and talked to me a lot about it because at that time my husband and I lived in the Middle East mm -hmm. and Lilia spent 40 years of her life in North Africa working with Algerian women and children. So as she passed these things by me, she and I became more and more convinced that she needed to write a book and then she needed to present Lilia's work to the world and it started in very miraculous kinds of ways that it even got published and then that the the book of Lilius writings and um, paintings got published and from there it kind of took on its own impetus eventually it led us to a very gifted um, movie writer Laura Waters and she's the one that put the movie together. Mm. It's a beautiful movie artistically, mm -hmm. as well as a very moving story. So you were a part of this all along. Yes, oh. I would have to say that's true. That is fascinating. <laughs> is this the first book Miriam wrote? No, mm -hmm. she had written other books, more along the line of mothering, homemaking, that kind oh. of thing. So there, are, there's so many aspects of this that um, it's hard to just choose one or two to ask you about. First of all, a Victorian woman that you know was a very, as we say, a complex age. It was. And to think, you know, that she made these decisions to do mm -hmm. something so radical mm -hmm. and go someplace so very different. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't that the part that was the most amazing to you. It absolutely was, yeah. in particular because she was a protege of John Ruskin, who kind of, kind of named everything at that point in terms of art, philosophy, social, social living, um, all kinds of things. He kind of was the spokesperson mm -hmm. for the Victorian age, right. and she became his protege, and made a choice. She was offered wonderful things by John Ruskin. Ruskin says I could be England's greatest living painter, that I could do things that would be immortal. But there was one condition, that she would give herself totally to her art. She now had the great crisis of her life. And she made a choice to do something else, which took a lot of courage, a lot of faith, and makes her story outstanding. And not everybody would make those kinds of choices, especially no. in the Victorian age where it, it, was, it was almost unheard of not to be taken care of. Absolutely. And As a single woman, exactly. for her to go to Algeria mm -hmm. was really astounding. She never left her art. She kept her art all her life. Mm -hmm. And her journal. Her journals so beautiful. and her artwork in the journals definitely shows that. And it, it probably, I mean, I'm assuming that artistic ability mm -hmm. let her see things in a way that we are able to see things. Absolutely. Because of her. 
because yes, of her artistic vision. That's right. And she always saw beauty, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant. Mm -hmm. She saw beauty and she had a wonderful way of painting it. She was an outstanding person in many ways mm -hmm. and somebody that I would love to meet. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I just kept thinking that, how, would, how exciting that would be. And then the title, Many Beautiful Things, The Life and Vision of Lilius Trotter, says a lot. The eight, late 1800s. So Bonnie, it made me, um, watching this, made me think a lot about making decisions. Yes. And decisions in my life. And I think mm -hmm. that might be part of what you'll um, mm -hmm. talk with us about when you facilitate a discussion after the movie. I hope we will have some good time for mm -hmm. discussion because there are questions that will be raised sure. by the movie, I believe. Mm -hmm. Certainly questions about Lilius and her life and so forth. And I'm excited because Miriam, the author of her biography, will be there for the movie. Uh -huh. And she'll be available to answer questions. That's going to be such so a treasure. So questions about Lilia's life, questions about her art, but also questions that we can ask ourselves based on her choices mm -hmm. and um, why she made some of those choices. It's so inspiring to think, you know, that we're not bound, really, mm -hmm. by anything other than what's what what's within us exactly if we can tap into exactly. that and what an example what a beautiful mm -hmm. example and I know you you spend a lot of time helping people um, look at what's in them uh, that is one of the great privileges of my life here at Shell Point yes and we all appreciate you for it it's wonderful <laughs> so this is going to be a great facilitated discussion even if we didn't have this amazing movie to start us off. Yes, and the movie is beautifully done. Mm -hmm. um, it has won several awards yeah. in different countries of the world, including the U.S., and I think anybody who comes will be glad they did. I do, too. Well, I hope that you will take the time to register at either service desk, join us for this experience, a beautiful DVD, called Many Beautiful Things and facilitated discussion with Bonnie Palmquist afterwards.